So one of the main talking points uh, in the asset class at the moment is, is clearly the impact that, that rising US dollar rates are going to have uh, on emerging market assets, be they currencies or, or equities. And I think context is really important in this regard. So we first started to talk about uh, US dollar tightening, quantitative tightening in May of 2013 with the well-documented taper tantrum, uh, as, it, as it was called at that point. Um, since then, emerging market currencies have devalued by around 50 percentage points. Um, so a significant weakening of emerging market currencies over that time frame. So, so when, we, when we talk about the impact that rate hikes have on emerging markets as an asset class from the starting point of today, I, I don't get the same sense that, that we're going to see consistent structural devaluations of, of, of the currencies, simply because of the fact that we've already weakened quite a long way. Terms of trade in terms of commodity prices, um, oil prices, etc., cetera, have, have, have improved. Uh, and the balance sheets of emerging markets are far different to where they were in previous US dollar rate hiking cycles. So, so from that perspective, I, I think that yes, there will definitely be volatility uh, in, in currencies, uh, but, but I don't see the same structural uh, devaluation trend that, 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 we've, that we saw from 2013 you know, up to 2016, 2017. Um, where, where I think interest rate hikes are potentially more important actually is in valuations of, of, of equities. Um, you know, interest rates form the discount rate that goes into, into equity valuation models, and clearly that discount rate is rising, which has, has implications for, for the PE multiples in which, in which companies w will trade. And, and I, I think that really there is, there is more risk to, 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 to valuations of equities as opposed to, to the typical rate hikes impacting EM currencies. And so that's really where I focus my attention in terms of the, the exposures that sit within the portfolio. Um, the second key topic within emerging markets as an asset class today is trade wars. Uh, the impact of trade wars on uh, global demand, on Chinese demand, uh, and, and the knock-on implications that that has for, uh, for emerging markets. Now, as things stand, uh, again, the context is important. So far, we've seen anything of the order of 150 to 200 billion of, of goods that have been identified as, 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 as due for increasing tariffs. Now, that needs to be sat against the 4.1 trillion of trade uh, that, that China conducts with the world on a global basis. So, so actually, the, 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 imp the impacted element of Chinese trade is still relatively, relatively small. Um, and, and, and so unless we see a significant escalation from here, I, I think it's something to be aware of, but it's not necessarily a major uh, a game changer in terms of the overall backdrop for the asset class. Potentially where it gets a little more interesting and, and more nuanced is, is when you look at those trade surpluses and, 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 and uh, in China and what 150 billion of tariffs may mean um, for, for, chi for the Chinese current account surplus. Um, you know, that current account surplus has has weakened somewhat over the last four to five years. Uh, China is increasingly becoming a country which, which can't afford to, to have too much capital outflow, uh, otherwise its balance of payments would tip into negative territory, and that might put pressure on the RMB. And so I think that if this trade war escalates, it's the second order effects of that in terms of what it means for the Chinese balance of payments, what that then means for, for the value of the RMB, and what the implications of that are for emerging market demand that, that, we, that, that we need to be alive to. Um, and, and within the context of the overall portfolio, the fund remains exposed to companies with very strong corporate governance, very strong balance sheet structures, good quality return profiles at a valuation which provides you know, a margin of safety. So, so, so the portfolio w you know, w would, would be relatively resilient uh, in that context.